All right. Well, on that note, I will start the recording. All right. Welcome to the Chaos Community Call for July 5th. Um, the minutes should be in the chat. Thanks for sharing the screen, Sean. Yes. Put them in the chat again. So for the next three weeks, um, we're going to be kind of having a few different people lead the community call. So I'll be leading it uh, this week. I will lead it next week. And, and I introduced, and you all can tell me I'm full, uh, full of crap, but I introduced the idea of somebody scribing. So there's kind of an assigned scribe. Sometimes it gets a little, I think Elizabeth tries to do both sometimes, and I think it gets overwhelming. Yeah. In the past, sometimes we just kind of have like everybody who's not leaving the meeting type things in, uh, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh... But yes, an assigned scribe is great. I'll call it the must scribe i would i would i actually do have to comment on ruth's comment on a tree she would like to be a money tree <laughs> yeah yeah i need a lot of money so. i like that i like that. that's creative i like it <laughs> oh if you're a tree what kind of tree would you be actually that was my idea i want my two dollars was a reference to better off dead starring john cusack but um all right so uh, welcome back. It's been a couple weeks, everybody. It's good to see all of you um, kind of get rolling again here with uh, our return from a break. Um, and thanks for waiting in the rating room. I think this seems to be working well. For those of you that do run meetings at all, um, just let me know because if you're logging in and you're a first time like administrator login into zoom it's going to ask you for a little code and i can get you that code um, like that two-factor authentication um and if we could have a if we could have a small chaos con meeting just uh, for it. that code yeah. thing uh, matt uh, yeah. so if we are logging from a different device we have to redo it again that process i did it on my laptop once i was trying from my ipad and i have to okay well just yes. Coordinate with me or with Elizabeth when okay. she gets back, because okay. we have access to the the email account. You know what I mean? Okay. They can give me the number. Yeah. Okay, so all good there. Um, let's see. We we have an an agenda. So somebody put together a pretty significant agenda. So thank you for whoever did that. I added a few items, but others have been in there as well. Okay. Well, that's great. So why don't we um, why don't we start our start our way through this? Sean, do you want to tell us a little bit about your software community events? That first one on the actual agenda. So one of the beauties of time away from regular meetings is you get to think about the things that you've been intending and wanting to do. And for uh, as a practical matter with GSOC, I've learned that meeting with individual people is you know sometimes we need to talk a long time, sometimes we don't. And so I've set up these windows for GSOC students working on software where they can just show up and I'll be there, except for yesterday when it was a US holiday and I forgot. Um, and then the second thing I've done is I've set up alternating Saturdays at a friendly, friendly to Europe and friendly to the US time where I'll come in and I'll invite Grimoire Lab folks in and we'll just host uh, people having questions about getting started with the software and if like you've got a Grimoire Lab question and there's a Grimoire Lab person there, put you in a breakout room and a, same with the Augur kinds of questions so that some of the barriers to entry for becoming part of the chaos software community are removed through these uh, routine routine gatherings and uh, just as Georg did not intend to be the permanent person doing podcasts. I don't intend to permanently do that or facilitate that. However, probably for the first year, um, I'll I'll do that. And I think I think that's part of one of our objectives of making our software more accessible. Um, so, I, okay, I, so I I got that started because I had time to think because I wasn't in meetings. So two questions then: the Saturday, the alternating Saturdays. What yes. do you have time on that? Yeah, I put it. I actually put it on the chaos calendar um and i think i did it right and i think i put it on the right chaos calendar but i think i may have learned subsequent to that there are two chaos calendars i need to make sure things are on okay i think i've got it on both of them so 
it begins at 6 a.m. Central Daylight Time, U.S. Chicago, and it goes until 9.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time, U.S. Chicago, which is convenient for Europe, reasonably convenient for North America, although perhaps, and the idea is not to, sh you, have to you don't have to show up for three and a half hours. The idea is that this is a window where you show up, when you show up, ask your questions and go on. So it's not okay. a, it's not a class. Um, it also ends at a time before which my children are usually up so I can get away with it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Ruth, do you have a question? Um, I had a comment. I really love like this, um, you know, workshop and events because personally, I would love to understand how the software works. <laughs> I know I've tried. I've tried to look at it sometimes and it's been pretty, you know, I've not been able to make ways with it. And I also see this as something that, you know, other community members would learn how to use and also teach others how to use. So yeah, it's really, um, it's a really great idea. And that we are I'll be attending that. Also, I wanted to ask if the sessions are going to be recorded and it's going to be long, like three hours. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. I think I, to... I can record them. They'll be three and a half hours long. So, uh, Perhaps I think I don't think Georg's, I don't think Georg's on this call, but I, I know with the podcast, sometimes we've used the chat as kind of a way to index things so that you don't have to scan through. And, and I'll I'll try to make notes about what is discussed at, during what time, um, so so that you don't have to listen to three and a half hours to get to the two minutes of information you really care about. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Sean. Sure. And, and the, I think the other thing that's important is this will address not so in the past I've done this for Augur because I knew Augur um, after meeting with Daniel, Daniel and a um, number of Grimoire Lab people back in March, I've, I've taken it on myself to begin to learn Grimoire Lab. And though I'm not nearly the experts that they are, um, the intention here is to, to support all chaos software um, and, and to provide introductions to all chaos software so that it's it's not an auger thing it's not a grimoire lab thing it's a we're looking at chaos software as a community um, where we can really help onboard newcomers more effectively if we offer some of these routine time slots okay thank you for that sean yeah. in a spirit of moving through our longer agenda um sean you're going to provide a you or maybe sophia oh we agreed that it would be the next. We would agree it would be the twelfth. Yeah. Because Sophia oh, yeah. and I, Sophia was and I were like, we won't be ready. Our minds won't be in it. I'm guessing this is July twelfth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll start from the bottom. Outreachy in terms of our mentorship programs here. Outreachy the the. Um, Second evaluation is due today, and I think Elizabeth has that taken care of. Mm -hmm. How are we doing on GSOC and Season of Docs reporting? Sean, do you have think, the timeline for those? Yeah, Season of Docs reporting has been going on, on schedule for the students that I'm docking. And for, for Season of Code, it's for whatever reason, I, I, would, I would make two observations, and neither of them are judgmental. It's been a little bit um it seems to be less embedded in the psychology of doing gsoc that we need to do blog posts every week so i'm working with uh the gsoc students i work with to make those happen um the, the second thing uh, again no judgment our gsoc students this year also seem to have other virtual work that they're doing for other enterprises and and this is not something that we've encountered before and I think it's likely a byproduct of the pandemic and people just being virtual, but I would I would just I have no judgment on it, but to just I think for others to be aware. Um, it's possible your GSOC students are also working on some other job at the same time, and that hasn't been the case in the past. I know a number of ours are for the auger projects. Okay, um, is it. It's just to be, a, it's an awareness thing because sometimes okay. it affects scheduling, for example. I haven't, um, in, except in limited cases, I haven't noticed that it affects progress at all. It, it's just, I think it affects scheduling more than anything. 
Okay. Do you think it's something that like next year we should be more attentive to, or I, I think it's something I'll mention in the feedback to the Google summer of code folks at the end of the season and, and something that I'll, I think we let them say something about it. I don't think that it would, I think it would be better if Google were to say something about that in the application process than for us to try to administer it as a project. Okay, Sean, I, that's a very good concern. I don't know if we want also to just make some inquiry from uh, Google to make sure it's, uh, so it's an acceptable practice. Because I quite remember in most, with most uh, corporations like Google, uh, Microsoft, Facebook, when you are doing an internship, they really like advice and one in their process. You cannot take that with any other, even in school work. If you are doing any other course, it's like illegal from the perspective of the internship. So, I, and, and Armstrong, I would agree. I would agree with you 100%. The reason I'm suggesting we don't take that stance is because I'm not only observing this in Google Summer of Code, I'm observing this in people who work for companies in real jobs that, that some of this virtual work engagement has people doing more than one job um, because they can and nobody notices. So I don't, I don't wanna cause problems for our current students because I think they're doing something that through the pandemic became socially acceptable. And like, I, I wanna make that, Google, I think that's something for Google to sort out. In yeah, the next I, cycle. Like, I like the idea of, okay, Sophia said she can check with the team relevant policies. I like the idea too, Sean, of maybe letting this sort out at the start of next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get punitive uh, because it wasn't clear and it, it's something that's brand new because of circumstances beyond all of our control. Yeah, but to Armstrong's point too, like if if Google is pretty adamant about like you need to work on this and this alone, then that should be um, yeah. sorted. Yeah, because like, I remember perfectly. when I spoke with one of the uh, coordinators for the internship program, not the GSOC, they told us that when they ever, when a corporation gives out stipend, they take all these things into consideration that they are like full time focused on that particular period of uh, time and the tasks they have been assigned to. So yeah. assigning themselves to another task is being unfair now for the corporations and the people doing, but it's, it's something we don't also want to raise up as you rightly said, Sean, we just have to be advised and then we make it clear from next time yeah. if they are, if they can do that okay if they cannot we make it clear for them yeah and i, I uh, yeah and i think that's fair i'm strong that's a good idea yeah. another nuance this year is google made us designate the size of project in each case and so some of the projects are half the hours of other projects so in those cases it seem would seem reasonable to me that a student would be perfectly able to handle additional work and and so that's a nuance that's new this year that that makes it harder for me to try to parse this out this year but if google has a clear policy i think we can make our students aware of it and but but i don't want to i don't intend to be an enforcer on that okay um good good conversation yeah. thank you sean thank you armstrong i did put the what i believe to be the Summer of Code and Season of Docs dates in there, July 18th and the 25th mm -hmm. for some additional reporting that needs to be done. Yes. So, uh, just have that on your on your sites. Um, let's see. So we are outreachy i think is the next um i mentioned outreach i think we're okay. on, we're doing okay on that i was reading we're, sophia's comment and we have chat. we have uh, outreachy we have one student or do we have two one oh, it's precious right yeah and we finally got a, a bill oh, nice. <laughs> from, nice from outreachy so we're well, i'm taking care of that so. well I, I would just like to call out precious she's doing an, an exceptional job not only at doing the work, but being proactive about identifying other things that could help the project. So right on. Uh, thank you, Precious. Right on. Um, okay, so I would like to say that the next one is with uh, graphic design needs. So we do have 
So this is there's a whole bunch of things kind of going on in this. Did somebody did somebody put that yeah, yeah. In, there in particular? I did. Okay. I did there. So um yeah, I think we're about to I, I don't think we've mentioned it during the weekly uh, meetings, but there's a whole bunch of stuff going on around design. So um if you navigate to that design document, we have like um some folks working on design so i was thinking for like the chaos con i know that we have like um we might need some graphic needs um so uh, maxwell is going to i think maxwell is on the call as well so i was going to ask uh, maybe the chaos con committee about like info for like details that would be in banners maybe attendee cards especially like um yeah. yeah and yeah like specific details that we need um for or any other thing aside um banners and attendee cards that we need for clear one and generally also like anything <clears throat> we need for design too i think this is a pretty good list um in terms of like the swag the, the conference items that you have on there ruth yeah um let's see yeah so i have so if, if you can get me some you and maxwell hi maxwell like some of the design elements i can get those printed on whatever we would like mm -hmm. you know so, and maybe maybe we want to think about like something nice for speakers and then attendees yeah. get something as well you know yeah, even like sizing as well like um, sizing of attendee. I know um, during conferences, they give out those attendee tags and, you know, yeah. banners, placeholders and all that stuff as well. Yeah, I can get all of those made here at the university mm -hmm. and, bring, and bring them. So I would just need the, what you propose. Yeah. As the, the items or the design things. Okay, great. That, that would be great. I think odds uh, of uh, I would work with Maxwell to get that to you. I don't know if Maxwell has any question. Maxwell, is Maxwell here? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, there's no question. Sorry. Um, thank you, Ruth, for introducing me. Um, there's no question currently. So. Okay, great. Well, Maxwell, you can just kind of connect with me on Slack. If you want to share things or have questions or stuff like that. And honestly, we can probably just decide what we want to make for chaos con, like in terms of shirts or stickers or hoodies or mugs or whatever. I'm just looking at that list and we can just kind of decide and bring it to the group. People don't usually seem to <laughs> get too worked up about that stuff, which is good. Yeah, I would connect with you as we guys that. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Also, um, I brought a bunch of chaos stickers to OSS NA and I was supposed to give them to somebody, but I forgot who and nobody asked me for them. So if okay. somebody wants me to send those stickers to them, I'd be happy to. I, I just couldn't remember who I was supposed to give them to. Okay. And now they're back in Missouri. Yeah, but but I you know I have envelopes and postage stamps. So okay. if um, if if somebody remembers who I was supposed to give those to, um, shoot me a note. Okay, um, Sophia, did you have a question or a comment? I think it's actually not related to this, so I'll save it for the end. Okay. Okay. Um, so Ruth and Maxwell, thank you very much for that, and then. Um, project badging. I think Sean, you have something that you want to bring up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as Demetrius and I sat in a hundred degree heat, heat at the um, opening event for OSS NA and enjoyed sipping uh, wine, uh, we were talking about what what would be really helpful is a way to scale the idea of badging. And so, what would be the minimum way that things have scaled following a pattern that GitHub has used before for sort of the minimum level of recognition for a project. One of the things they've done before is simply look for the existence of a, for example, code of conduct file 
code of conduct of .md with a specific name containing specific sections. And once you met this checklist, there was no explicit badging per se, but what would happen is you would show up in GitHub's repository search. So it wasn't like an announced thing, but this is what would actually happen. And so the thought we had for scaling the DEI project badging was to scan for the existence of a DEI.MD document containing the sections that we prescribe. And then that would provide some like the lowest possible level of recognition that would enable the, the DEI badging program to scale, allow a message to the maintainer that, hey, you can get another badge level. And also, I don't think undermine our efforts in any way. And then let us have a form a more formal peer review badging program for projects um, at the next level. Which, which would let the sort of the visibility of this effort grow more quickly. That's, that's the proposal or the idea. I don't think we need resolution today, but I throw it open for discussion. So the idea would basically be if a project includes a DEI.MD file. Containing the with, whatever sections we specify. Yep, containing, in this case, newcomer experience, I, hold on. I, I don't remember the. I don't remember. No, they're right here. They're project burnout, newcomer experience, recognizing oh, yeah. contributors and inclusive leadership. Mm -hmm. That, that, and then no matter what they really said under those sections, they right. would be some preliminary like, okay, we see that you have this doc and you're moving forward to 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 address these, and then maybe the site, I, yeah, but, DEI importance recognized or something very very. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then the second would be that you would essentially put this DEI.MD file under a human review. Right. It'd be the same file, but then yeah. you'd have somebody yeah. like myself or whomever on this call to actually look look at the file in more detail and say, hey, I know you said you attend to newcomer experience, but you're not talking about that at all. So or yep. something along those lines. Is that exactly. right? Yep, exactly. That's exactly okay. right. Okay. And then, yeah, the aim is very plainly to promote the idea of VEI and also to allow it to scale to, you know, more quickly. Okay. Uh, Ruth, do you have a comment or a question? Yeah, I do have a comment. So I think it's a really great idea because it's also going to speak to um, folks or projects that do not have, you know, the detailed um, DEI document or these things we have put out there. We could also while recognizing them, we could also point them to how they could do it. Because I think over the break, um, there was kind of something I thought about where we uh, could run workshops on how um, projects could, you know, enforce or maybe um, go further on this DI document and put in all this stuff. We could, you know, think about that and how we could do that is if we have something scalable like the basic badging that's where we could get those projects and you know offer to run workshops for them um or you know sessions uh, like the bona maintainer session we had which was really nice so yeah i think i totally agree with that idea cool awesome i i like the idea on the first like first <laughs> reception of it um but it, you're right i mean no conclusion today but it's something good to think about and i think it's a positive positive thing to think about do other people have comments on this good all right um justin did put a comment in there Be yeah, I can come in on that one here. Oh yeah, okay, great. So, Thanks. Uh, so just something that I've seen also in my work, where we're running kind of like, kind of like a badging ish program. Um, so one thing when we get feedback from people along like why they didn't meet a certain indicator or they're trying to understand something better, like one of those things that can help save a lot of time is having like that help center knowledge base, some kind of documentation that you can quickly point people to that might explain. What does this indicator mean? That's what good. kinds of factors look into it? And you no, know, and then also getting to the 
piece of how you can make, take steps to achieve this, this action point. So that could be something like fitting in with the workshops piece, then could also be used in the workshops as well. So we could have multiple people running those workshops, kind of using the documentation as a, as a common building block there too. I like that. Um, and I do think we're going to have to rely on like the promotion, but also the workshops. And this is, that's a nice way to structure it. So thanks for that, Justin. Um, okay. So how about Ruth, I'm guessing you put the burnout maintainer session in there, but maybe not. Yeah, I just I just want to mention that was awesome. It was a really good session. And we I think we got like up to 15 attendees. I have forgotten, but up to, up to 15, I think. And we have the notes. Um we did take notes thanks to Sophia. Sophia did an amazing job with the notes. So yeah, you could look at it from I put the link to the notes there. So um yeah, we did. I think we'd probably discuss how we want to use the notes in the DI meeting tomorrow. But yeah, I just want to give updates on how the session went. That's a good idea. I will, Ruth, I'll go ahead and put that in the DEI meeting for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah sure. Talk about. That's I'm a good well, idea. Zach, how are you? Oh, you're on, not on, there you go, Sean. <laughs> Before you go having a full conversation. Okay, um, great. And thank you for, um, Kind of leading that, Ruth, from really the, the start through the whole the whole kind of um, you know running running the session and also agreed. Thanks, Sophia, for taking the awesome notes throughout the entire thing. So you get hand claps too. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's see. We're at uh, thirty three, about half past. Um, Let's see, we're, we're in the new items. I think those are like old items. Are they? <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, yeah but so too. Just adding, adding on, we kind of like, we had a really good meeting yesterday. Um, okay. You know, I think part of our focus for Chaos Africa is to like find these challenges and see how we could solve like challenges that African open source contributors face. So we had a very good um, conversation in our meeting yesterday about different challenges. And we are kind of um, starting with one of them, which is around like um, poor contribution, uh, contributor experience, poor onboarding, onboarding rather, poor onboarding contributor experience. So. A lot of persons, you know, mentioned that they they've seen it happen a lot. So we we are moving forward with kind of starting with the survey to like understand that within the African ecosystem. So yeah, so that's just what I wanted to add. From Chaos cool. Africa. Thank you. Could you, Ruth? I did have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Have you talked in your? Because I haven't been to the sessions. Have you talked about how to to share these experiences? like more broadly than just like the chaos zoom channel or chaos slack yeah we have not talked in depth but we do have like a focus group of technical writers um and then i think over over the over the following months would we'll try to roll out i think twitter spaces because like nigerians and africans do use twitter a lot so yeah i think we'll plan to roll that out soon but we haven't talked about it during zoom but we do have those focus groups as well for, for those kind of things okay cool thank you thanks for that all right great sorry i was gone my rotary guy called kind of an important thing i can't do laundry right now <laughs> it's the laundry meeting today <laughs> yeah it really is <laughs> all right uh, all right, so actually we, I'd like to use this last little bit of time just to talk through ChaosCon just a little bit. So I'm gonna end the meeting, uh, the Chaos Weekly meeting right now, or at least stop the recording. Okay.